Good afternoon. Today on Defying Jeep, we're going to talk about tires. Now, tires is something you don't normally want to talk about because it considers two things. One is tires. We really don't like to talk about tires because one, they're expensive. Two, they involve money, which is the other subject we don't like to talk about. But in today's lesson, we're actually going to help you get to know your tires. What is your tire type? What tire is right for you? Um, we're going to venture into different tire sizes, markings of tires, the types of symbols on tires, date codes, DOTs. We're even going to touch on an area where if you get a flat, we're going to show you how to plug a tire real quick. We're going to show you how to set your PSI because that question comes up a lot. Steve, what is the right air for my Jeep? And in today's lesson, we're going to touch all that uh, and let's, get, let's go ahead and get started here. So. First, let's talk about tires. There's different kinds of tires. You have all-terrain tires, you got mud-terrain tires, you got regular rated trail tires, and of course you got passenger car tires. Passenger car tires is something we don't necessarily are gonna touch, but believe it or not, a lot of our Jeeps are actually built with a passenger car type tire installed on them for the manufacturer. One, it's lesser expensive for the manufacturer. Two, it's a very cushy ride on road, but it's not a real off-road tire. There's so many disadvantages to using that kind of tire, um, like the tread, you know, the size of the tire, uh, how capable is the tire, how many plies the sidewall has, that kind of thing. So of course we're going to touch that subject today. So first let's go ahead and talk about uh, your all-terrain tires. Well, let me get that there. Now you do have your all-terrain tires, and, and as you can see on the image right here, that your all-terrain tire has a let me see a nice smooth pattern you can see by the image that's uh, projected here this is a be a gooders tire it has three actual types of lugs it's got a c and s and a dog bone and you can plainly see them where the the c is the middle tread the s is the edge tread and the dog bone is the one in the middle now what makes this tire very unique in its own way is that pattern it is a quiet tire now before i move any further please let me make sure that you know that i am not sponsored nor affiliated with be a Goodrich or any other tire brand out there. I'm just putting this lesson out there for all of my Jeepers so they understand a little bit more about your tire. Now, all-terrain tires, they come in six ply, eight ply, and 10 ply tires. And these are all easily uh, rated uh, by the type of uh, carcass that they're built on. Other types of tires are the mud terrain. We like the mud terrain. They are, you can see that they are a little bit more aggressive tread in fact, these tires right here have a bigger lugs, wider spread apart, good for gripping and holding on to other stuff. They also come in a uh, six ply, eight ply, and 10 ply tires. And both the all-terrain and the mud-terrain are rated mud and snow. Now let's talk about tire sizes. You're gonna have different types of tire sizes. You have the uh, standard size, well, the ones that we refer to as a standard size, which are really called a flotation size. Those are your 31s, 33s, 35s, 37s, 40s, and so forth. Then you have the metric style. Those are the ones like your 245, 75, 17, your 255, 75, 17, even your 285, 70, 17. These are all metric sizes. And those have more to do with aspect ratio. And we can touch, back, touch on that lightly in a moment. Now, you have the, the, the metric size tire that have the letter P next to it. The P stands for either passenger car tire or P metric. Either, either one of those are very acceptable, very rational uh, definitions there. Then you have the other tires, uh, like the more aggressive tires, the, uh, either your all-terrain or your mud-terrain, they're gonna have an LT before the size. It'll be an, either an LT metric or an LT flotation. The LT actually stands for light truck. Now, uh, let me touch that. Touch that. The sidewalls of your tires, they are going to have load range uh, settings on there. Now, looking at the tire, you're going to see that it's going to either say load range E, load range D, load range C. Load range C is a six ply tire. Load range D is an eight ply tire. Load range E is a ten ply tire. Now, these tires, by their class and their carcass and how many plies they are they do get heavier so of course the more plies you have the heavier the tire is going to be um moving forward with that i got a couple old tires over here i do have a load range c tire and i have a load range e tire we're going to go ahead and cut those up so and i'm going to give you a section with 
of these tires just so you can see the difference in the sidewall carcass. So that little bit of a challenge was a fail. Oh my God, I am so embarrassed. I wasn't ready for that one. Um, turns out that the carcass is tougher than I thought, even on a six ply tire where I couldn't even saw through it with a regular sawzall or reciprocating saw. Looks like I'm gonna need some kind of angle grinder because that is very strong, very tough uh, material that it's all composed of between the, the compounds and the steel belts and, and, and other retention systems that are built within a tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this diagram right here of a so a cutaway of a tire so you can kind of get an idea of the sidewall carcass and the thickness and what you're really focusing on is the sidewalls right here now this is uh, a diagram or a depiction of a six ply tire so consider thinking about a 10 ply tire and the sidewalls are going to be thicker significantly thicker i think that the only analogy i can come up with is that when we were kids back in the day we used to go to the bike shop we used to go buy a replacement inner tube now you had a choice. You had to get the replacement $5 inner tube for your bicycle tire, or the guy at the other end of the counter tried to sell you the $10 to $15 replacement inner tube, which was a thicker tube, much stronger tube. So that's the same idea that we have here between six ply and 10 ply tires. Let's not forget about your uh, your eight ply tires. They're, they're great tires, but really when we do the off-roading, we're going in one direction. We're either going to the six ply tire which is a softer ride, even at uh, full PSI where you're supposed to be, or you're gonna go with a 10 ply tire, which is a stronger, stiffer sidewall, uh, more resilient tire. Now, uh, moving on with that, let me grab this real quick. And let me just check on a little something I had going on here earlier. I was so prepared to do this presentation that I kinda, Got a little nervous here. I'm not even gonna lie about that, I got a little nervous. But I'm gonna take care of this for you right now. Okay, I got that. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, your DOT codes. The DOT codes is something on your tire that is legal marking. This legal marking is on every tire. Now, if I can move to a side for a second here. Now you're gonna notice on this image right here, you have a tire. And what we're really focusing on is those little bit of letters towards the bottom where to start with DOT, you have three sections of numeration or three sections of numbers. Let's start with DOT, Department of Transportation. All right, this is a legal number, US government legal number that it has to abide by. Now you have the first set of uh, letters and numbers combination. It can be the batch of the tire. So they're, these are made in so many at a time, they're all assigned a batch number. The second set of numbers is the manufacturer's code. It's usually uh, a letter and two numbers. This has to do with which manufacturer built the tire and what location, even what country code. Now, the third set of numbers, that's the important one to you. The third set of numbers is the date code. A lot of times you're gonna ask, hey, how old is my tire? Hmm, I don't know. I've had these tires for so much time, but when was the tire really built? How old is this tire? That's how you're going to look at this third set of numbers. And in this particular case, it says 2421. Now, in those four numbers, the first two numbers are the week of the year. The second two numbers is the year itself. So 2421, this tire was built the 24th week of 2021. Uh, today is somewhere late August 2022, so I know the tire is about a year old, you know, give or take. All right, so now, do that. let's talk about flat for a second. One of our favorite features. You're gonna look at this picture right here, and what we're looking at is a screw in a tire, okay? It's our favorite moment. You're in a hurry. You got stuff to do. You're on your way to a trail, on the way back from a trail, home, work, whatever it is, this is gonna happen. You know, we, we pray it doesn't. Most of the time we're very fortunate, but it does happen. So let's go take a look at a flat repair real quick. And what I mean by flat repair is that we're actually gonna plug a tire. 
Yeah, let me go ahead and put these on because these tires are filthy, filthy, filthy dirty. You know, I, I talked about this on a, in a previous video, you know, cleanliness. You want to go ahead and keep yourself clean. As much as we love working on our stuff over here, we got to consider we got wives, we got children. We don't want to touch them with our dirty hands. They don't want to be touched with dirty hands. Let's keep it clean. All right, so. Oh. Got this tire right here. I went ahead and I marked it with an X where the, uh, where the puncture is. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and take our kit. Now, I do have a flat repair kit here. These flat repair kits come in many different variations. This one in particular is, is, a, is a mighty kit here. Uh, very complex. I've got uh, uh, the valve stem core tool. I've got valve stem caps. I've got replacement valves. I've got other tools that are useful, like a pair of pliers to go ahead and pick out the uh, the penetrating object, like the nail or a screw, a piece of glass, anything that's in there that shouldn't be, you can just pluck it out. Of course, I got a tire air gauge, my plugs, and of course the important tools used for the job. I'll go ahead and take these out for a moment, and I'm going to show you how these work. Okay, this is your reaming tool. You're gonna use this to massage the penetrated area, which is gonna give it enough wiggle to make it a little smoother than what it is. So which is gonna give it our ins and outs for a little bit. We're gonna make it nice and smooth and an easy injection for the tool itself. This is our tool. This is our, uh, I don't even know what it's called. Let's just call it the plug injection tool for right now. Now these come in different forms. This particular one has a shield on it, which is gonna help us extra, extract the tool when we finish inserting the plug. All right, so once you find your location, you're gonna find yourself a decent plug. Now keep in mind that your supplies, like your plugs and your valve stem cores, or replacement caps, all these are replaceable. You can find them in individual packs at your local parts house. You know? So what we're gonna do with this one here, this is your insertion tool. We're gonna take the plug and we are gonna work it in the tool like so. So now you got this right here. That's how it looks. But first we're gonna take our injection tool. We're going to locate a hole. In this case, I've already pre-done that. I've marked it with an X with a tire crayon. As a matter of fact, talking about tire crayons, it's regular tire chalk or quarter crayon. You can find this in your local auto parts store. It's just a big piece of wax crayon. We're going to get more into this in a moment. So how we're going to operate this tool is we're going to locate our penetrated area. We are going to work it in there. Just like so, we're gonna give it a little bit of massage. Now this will be a whole lot easier when this is on the ground, mounted on your rim, uh, full of air. Of course, it's gonna be heavier. So it's just pretty much like that. And let me try and give it a few more massages in there. And now it's working itself a whole lot easier. Much easier. Okay, so this is telling me right now that this should be ready for a plug. So I'm gonna put down my penetrating tool. I'm gonna grab my uh, plug insertion tool and it's already prepared with my plug. So now we're gonna mate it to the hole. We're gonna give this a good shove. Again, much easier when it's on the ground, uh, wood mounted on the rim. All right, so now, just for a moment, Let's take a look at this tool. It's penetrated to a nice way where you have maybe about three quarters of an inch of plug sticking out. Let's take a look at it from the inside for a second. So you get an idea what it's supposed to look like inside the tire. You'll never be able to see it because it's mounted on the rim, but let's take a look at how it looks like now that we, we're gonna take advantage that it's not mounted. 
All right, now let's take a look at this tire from the inside. Where are, there it is. Okay, so now this is what you can see. This is how it'll look like inside your tire. This thing is ready to be pulled out. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and then we're gonna move forward with the rest of this little experiment. Alrighty, now back at the workbench here with this tire. What we're gonna do at this point right here is uh, this tool, I'm gonna remind you they will vary. It, a lot of them do not have this tool. So if, if the, this extension right here, this may be helpful to you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this little part down and you're gonna pull out your tool. Ooh, there she goes. All right, now the plug is off the uh, insertion tool. We can see right here, you do have that same three quarters of an inch of uh, a plug sticking out of there. And the plug is secured in place. As a matter of fact, let me show it to you. You'll never be able to see it. As I mentioned, this tire will be mounted on a rim, but it's a, it's a good idea to know what it looks like on the inside, just to make sure it went in right. All righty, where are you, little buddy? There you are. That is your plug. That is your plug. It's inserted well. All right. So now one more, oh, one more final touch, and this plug will be set. All righty, so we're about done with this. We got two more things to do here. Now, one thing that this kit of mine did not come with is a pair of side cutters or wire snips, dikes, whatever you want to call them. They're pretty much the same tool. As I mentioned earlier, you got about three quarters of an inch of plug over here. Now it is a bit unsightly. Most would like to snip them off like so. You may want to go to uh, as minimal as possible without damaging the plug or without removing it. And the little bit that's left over, believe me, will be handled by the road. The weight of the vehicle, the revolutions, the speed, that's all going to flatten this out into the tread. So you're going to be fine with that. Now, my best recommendation, I know this is probably something that's next to never gonna happen. If you are available to a water bottle, take advantage of it. Do some squirting on the penetrated area. Make sure that there is no bubbles coming out. That is a guarantee that the plug has sealed well. If you still have bubbles, you have to redo it. Maybe multiply the amount of plugs you need to put in there. Instead of one, maybe use two. Now, these are all inserted at the same time. And the same idea goes for the type of penetration. This was just a regular screw, you know, sheet metal screw, drywall screw. It was fun. it was easy to pluck out. But just consider the fact that there are other objects out there, larger objects like a larger bolt or some other object that's oddly shaped. In that case, you will have to multiply the use of plugs. Use two, three, or four, whatever's going to use or be available to fill up that cavity to make sure it doesn't leak. And just remember, when you're done, Squirt it with some water, make sure no bubbles are coming out. That's going to make sure that this job is safe and is done right. From this point right here, you're going to rear up your tire the appropriate PSI. Talking about PSI, let's, let's, let's touch on that for a second. A lot of people want to ask me, Steve, how much PSI should I run in my vehicle? Well, you know, that is... A good question it's a very strong question i want you to consider the fact that your jeep is your rig there are many like it but yours is yours that being said everybody builds their rig a little different so i want you to take a look at this graphic right here you can see by the uh, by the image you have a cutaway of three tires just below them you have the actual tire and the center that tire is wearing evenly all the way across. The one on the left is wearing out the stabilizer bar. That is the center tread of the tire. That's letting us know there's too much air. The one on the left is wearing out the edges of the tire. That's letting us know that there's not enough air. So how much air do I put in my tire? Well, you can put your standard 35 PSI like the manufacturer said. Totally your call. But remember, this is the manufacturer setting for manufacturer applied tires or manufacturer applied size tire. And what I mean by that is if your vehicle came with a 245 75 17 or a 255 75 17, 
But one day you decided to jump to 35s or 37s or even 33s. Why not? The status quo has changed. You are no longer a manufacturer specs. You made your rig your rig. So the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and adjust your PSI by means of manual labor. And it's not hard. This is something you can go ahead and knock out yourself. Going back to the tire chalk. Now this is my choice, definitely easier. You can see right here that we have uh, this image that shows the tire chalk and you also have a tire paint marker or, oh gosh, I don't even know what they call them. But anyway, this is the preferred choice. This one right here is, is, is a lot more economical. I mean, you can get this for like, what, two, three bucks at the auto parts store. The other one is more of a marker or a paint pen. It, it's mainly used to decorate your tires, whether you want to paint the letters or the sidewall, whatever it is. And it comes with a different assortment of colors, totally your call. But for general purposes, the tire crayons are the way to go. So what we're gonna do with this crayon is that you're gonna stretch mark a, a, a thick line across your tire. Just, just go to town, make it visible. Whatever your PSI setting, let's, uh, let's pretend you got 35s on there. And your manufacturer setting is 35 PSI, but that's on a 245, 75, 17, significantly small tire. That's generally about the size of a 30 inch tire, maybe nine inches wide, maybe not. Um, you change the status quo on your tire so you went larger. Go ahead and scratch the, the, the tire with the crayon. You want to go ahead and air up, let's say, let's, let's take it down a few pounds. Instead of 35, let's start at, uh, let's start at 32. Let's start at 32. That's not a bad call right there. So you went from a 245, 75, 17 to a 35. Let's start at 32 PSI. You're going to take it down the block or wherever you're going to ride around for, I don't know, mile, two miles. Then check, and then check your chalk or tire crayon. Check your crayon mark. If it's wearing too much in the center, you got too much air in it. Let some air out. You may want to go down another two PSI and test it again. Uh, vice versa for if it's wearing on the edges, you got not enough air. Go ahead and put in two more pounds. Um, though, frankly speaking, going to a larger size tire, that's not going to be the case. But you know, uh, going two increments may seem a little monotonous, but honestly, if you want the right PSI for the perfect wear so that you don't get entangled in another very frequent expensive tire replacement cost. This is what you're gonna to have to do to figure out the correct PSI for your vehicle. Now, this is gonna vary, uh, again, between your rig is your rig. You've got you know, larger tires, uh, wider wheels to get a little heavier. You've got suspension lift kits. You've got accessories. I love accessories. No, we're, we're, I mean, we're talking um, steel fender flares, you know, lights, uh, replacement hood, spare tire uh, carrying racks, uh, all the armor, the bumpers, the uh, rock sliders. Uh, and you know, even your um, your skid plate system, everything you add to your vehicle is going to add more weight. So now you have to adjust the PSI so the tires wear correctly. All right, so uh, the tire chalk is definitely the best method to go, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it, it is a little bit of work, but for you to dial in your vehicle and really tune in your PSI, that's how you're going to have to handle that one. All righty. Um, this, this has actually been great. Uh, thank you for joining me at Defiant Jeep. Um, also, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, share, and of course, click that little bell uh, and, and follow me as much as you can. I could really use your support and, and of all of your help in that method with all of my Jeep people. And don't forget to uh, join us at uh, DesertWranglers.club. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, if there's anything else I can do for you or if any questions I have not answered, please feel free to contact me. I will get back to you as fast as I can. I'm always happy to help. Um, if anything, stay tuned. Uh, our next video is going to be somewhat a little bit more electrical. Hopefully we can get that done as fast as we can, but uh, we we'll definitely see you soon.